Hey guys, how you guys doing? It's Monday, April 16th, 2018. Hoping you're having a, having a wonderful day, guys. A blessed day, indeed. Uh, I haven't made a video in a couple days, guys. Uh, the strike that happened Friday night uh, couldn't happen at the worst time for me to cover it, guys. Uh, I was out uh, of my home. I was busy. I had a live stream going. The live stream went down. When I got back home, I put it back up. I had a conversation with a few of you guys. Uh, who were in uh, that live stream. I think we had close to 100 people, maybe a little bit more, uh, and we were all talking about the situation at hand. Uh, I had a very busy weekend. Uh, my son got baptized, so I put that, I put that uh, you know, priority-wise, that was at the top, was getting ready for that, guys. But I wanted to make this video to talk about the situation, right, to keep you guys informed, uh, have a discussion, all right? Uh, one, uh, Trump did order a, a strike against Syria, but what does that mean? What what happened, you know? It seemed like we hit, hit three uh, three sites, uh, very limited uh, strike. I mean, the amount of missiles that were fired and the amount of sites that were hit, um, you know, it was bigger than last year's, but still limited, right? Um, and a lot of people were wondering, oh my gosh, is this it? Is this World War Three? Uh, you know, what's happening, you know? Uh, and let's talk about that. So Russia did not respond, okay? Uh, no Russian troops were uh, injured in this. Uh, it looks like a lot of Syrians were injured either because the Russians uh, had the Syrians evacuate. We talked about uh, this situation and how a limited strike by Trump is, was an option, right? Would it actually do anything? No. No, it wouldn't, right? Uh, <laughs> no air, none of their air force was hit. Uh, these chemical uh, sites were evacuated. Everything that was important was was got gotten out. They just got it out, right? Um, no people were, were really injured. I, I think there's a few civilians that may have been uh, hit in the uh, crosshairs. It depends on what report you read, right? You know, on the U.S. side, they say that they they fired more than 100 Tomahawk missiles and only lost a few. And on the Russian side, they seemed to troll a little bit and said only three got through. Um, no Russian anti-air or anti-missile batteries uh, had been activated. They were active. They just, you know, did not participate uh, during this strike. You know, they did not retaliate in any fashion, right? Because we heard a lot of Russian talk stating that, you know, if this uh, attack occurred, there would be consequences, you know. But a lot of us thought, you know, Russia would not get into the fight unless uh, they were pro provoked into it. Uh, there was a lot of different information coming in and out, some saying that Trump wanted to strike not just Syria, uh, Syria but Syria's Air Force, uh, Russian anti-missile batteries, uh, some people saying that, you know, uh, Mattis had to talk Trump down, uh, that it, Dumford and Mattis and, and Trump and Bolton were knocking heads together. Macron came out and stated uh, that he, uh, you know, talked Trump down, but also is keeping Trump in Syria, but now he's walking that back. Basically, guys, all of this is just a big ploy, all right? Just because Russia did not respond initially to these strikes doesn't mean that, you know, oh, crisis averted. That's just not what happened, all right? Uh, what this did was the U.S. came in after this supposed chemical attack that looks extremely fake, that looks like has nothing to do with Assad, all right, looks like it was a setup from the very beginning by the West to stay in Syria to eventually bring the Assad regime down. All right, so what we're seeing here is the fact that the U.S. and the West used this chemical weapons attack to set up a limited strike. All right, not the big strike, not not the uh, catalyst that we thought we were going to see in Syria, right? But they used this fake chemical weapons attack to push these limited strikes. Russia did not take the bait. Russia did not uh, activate any of their anti-missile defense systems. All right, None of them were active in this fight. It lasted, I, be, I believe, about an hour and a half the strikes did. But after, afterwards, what happened? We saw some United Nations Security Council meetings that literally do nothing. They're, they're laughable at best, right? Okay, even the Syrian uh, diplomat at the UNSC is just like, why are we having these? Why? Like, what's the point? And he's right. What is the point? The fact uh, of the matter is, with these strikes, all it does is leave the door open for wider possibilities. 
right? All right, because it, it, the West is going to continue to prod at Assad, all right? They're going to continue to set up these false flag attacks within Syria, all right, to get to their end goal. And now the end goal, now that's debatable. You know, some people are saying, well, Israel's running the whole show because the day after, or the day before and the day after is Israel was reported to uh, launch attacks into Syria against Iranian uh, outpost. And why? Because Israel doesn't want Iran in their backyard, right? I mean, these country, both these countries do not like each other one bit. They do not. And a lot of people think one of the end goals, one of the end games that this limited strike just opened the door for is uh, a face-off be between the West, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. All right. What does this? What did this limited strike actually do? What do we know it did? All right. It hurt relations between the West and Russia even more, if that's even you know possible. Uh, it hurt relations even more between the West and Russia. It pushed what, uh, Russia, Syria, Iran, and China even closer together. Even closer together. All right. Also, does this affect the whole North Korea situation? Does North Korea see this and say, "Hey, listen." Russia apparently went in, they dealt with the chemical weapons in Syria, all right? They're accounted for. They're at different sites, but they're accounted for, all right? And still, there's attacks happening. Does North Korea see this and say, hey, you know, if we give, our, give up our nuclear weapons, is this going to really deter uh, anything that the West really, their end game? And the answer is probably not, okay? Uh, the, the West is ran right now by the deep state, and the deep state is pushing these agendas. And their agenda, whether you want to say it's the pipeline, whether you want to say it's you know Iran basically uh, being taken over and a uh, puppet a government being placed within it, all right? Whether that's you know a, a greater war between the West and Russia and China, because that's something that's coming. You know, it, it, when people say, "Oh, we we averted World War III," that's just not the case. Nikki Haley, the United Nations, said that Trump was locked and loaded. The U.S. was locked and loaded if there is another chemical weapons attack. Okay? And the three sites that we hit, that's not going to deter you know, any chemical weapons uh, from being used. All right? They can still, you know, in a couple months, in a couple weeks, whatever happens, the uh, Syrian government could be blamed for another chemical weapons attack. Their air force is still intact. All right, so the West has a scapegoat to push the agenda even more if need be, and that's most likely what they're going to do. All right, and these Israeli strikes that we've been seeing within Syria against Iranian troops, that's not helping the situation either. It really isn't. Now we're hearing that Iran may actually retaliate against uh, Israel, and they have every right to. They've lost uh, troops to Israeli attack. The, these Iranian troops were invited to Syria, Israel violated the sovereignty of Syria, bombed these sites, killed Iranian individuals, and they have every, every right to retaliate. Now, does this mean that I'm defending Iran or Syria or Russia or China? No. All right? Every government has uh, the rich and the powerful that make the decision while 99% of us uh, get to deal with the consequences. All right. I'm just letting you know that there are parties on both sides that are not to be trusted. They're not to be trusted. On the west side, you've got the deep state who's pushing these agendas. They're pushing war in Syria. All right. This limited strike, that's something that's not over. You know, Friday after it happened, Friday into Saturday, we were hearing from the administration, different generals, that this was the first wave, that this is not over. All right, they walked back those comments, but the language is still there. You can tell that this is going to continue to happen, guys. All right, this situation is not going to get better. We talked about it for the past couple months. I said two or three months ago that look look for a chemical weapons attack in Syria. It's going to be a false flag. All right, the West wants wants Bashar al-Assad out. He's a very uh, key ally to Russia. All right, and, and the end goal here is uh, Russia, China, and the West. All right, that's the end goal. All right, it, you know, a lot of people have a different, a lot of different debatable ideas. Uh, some people think they go back to the old Wesley Clark, uh, Clark uh, interview where he listed what the seven countries 
uh, that the West wanted to take down, and one of the last ones is Iran. Iran has not been taken down. So a lot of people think end, end goal is Iran. I think end goal is the U.S. v. Russia v. China, or the West v. Russia v. China. And Iran, that, that's just a consolation prize. That's something that's just going to occur. If you draw the line in the sand like we've been stating, you know, it's been, the evidence for this global conflict that is in the works is mounting. It's becoming, a, it's becoming larger and larger. All right? And on one side, you're seeing China, Russia, Iran, Syria, North Korea. Uh, sometimes people add Pakistan into that. You know, These countries, you're, 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 you're seeing the evidence mount that they're growing closer together. And they're growing closer together. <laughs> that's, that's not just because uh, they all have like-minded individuals. It's because it's also what the West and the deep state are pushing. Guys, this is a serious situation. It's not going away. All right, the UN Security Council is not going to do a damn thing about this. All right, every time they have a meeting, it's laughable to listen at, because the same people side up together and they vote together, and the same the the other side they just veto and vice versa. All right, no common ground is met. The Syrian diplomat, the last few days a after uh, the strikes in Syria happened, he was one of the most calm. Cool-minded individuals that I've seen in the UN, United Nations Security Council in a long time, and uh, you know, did it change the vote? Did it change hearts and minds? It didn't. You know why? Because there's an agenda being played out. This is something we're gonna have to continue continue to watch, guys. Uh, I'm sorry. This is uh, my first video, and this happened Friday. I've been extremely busy, guys. Uh, I'll try to keep up with information as it comes in, uh, guys. I mean, this is a serious situation, and. These, this limited strike does not mean it's over. This just opens the door for wider possibilities for a greater conflict. Uh, you know, this opens the door for more, more false flags. This opens, opens the door for North Korean and U.S. Uh, negotiations to just fall through because why would Kim Jong-un give up his nuclear weapons if he sees countries like Syria, countries like Libya do the same thing, countries like Iraq do the same thing, and in the end, they all get the, they all get the same result, and that's airstrikes by the West. That's invasion. That's their sovereignty being violated. Why would he do that? This, like I said, this opens so many different possibilities. It, it does not uh, help relations between the West and Russia or the West and China. This is something we're going to have to continue to watch, guys. All right, as more information about it comes in, I'll let you guys know. We'll talk about it. We'll discuss it. Have a beer. Say a bunch of prayers, guys. And uh, as always, now in the rest of 2018, keep your eyes to the skies. God bless.